What is going on, you two people? Northeast Ohio Cards and Comics here. To talk the latter today, comics. To talk a little across the Spider-Verse uh, trailer dropped earlier this week. And it has had some ripple effects. Some serious FOMO is kicking in right now uh, regarding this trailer and, you know, the books that are going off around it. So we're going to kind of dive into some of that real quick. Touch on a couple of these uh, books that are going a little cray cray right now, because uh, it. I understand why it's happening, but it really just doesn't make sense. So like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff down below. So this trailer kind of came out of nowhere. People were not expecting this to drop. Um, it heavily features Miles Morales, obviously, uh, Spider Gwen, and Spider Man twenty ninety nine. That's going to be a big focus of today's video. Spider-Man 2099 looks like he's going to be a major player in this next upcoming movie. And he was also in the post credit scene or one of the post credit scenes for the first movie into the Spider-Verse. This is the part that you just got to love. I mean, this, whether you're a sports card collector, a comic book collector, a Marvel card collector, whatever, a classic case of FOMO and just market hype driving two books in particular that just don't make a ton of sense. Uh, the reason for that is, is like I said, he was in the post credit scene when the first movie came out. It was heavily implied that he was going to be a major player in the second movie. The first movie was a massive hit. We knew there was going to be a second movie. It's been announced forever. We just haven't seen a trailer. Now the trailer drops and suddenly... Spider-Man 2099 stuff is going is going crazy. Uh, up on the screen here, we have Spider-Man 365, 30th anniversary cover, hologram, really fun cover. I remember this when it came out as a kid. Um, everyone running to grab this thing because it had a, the homage to Amazing Fantasy 15. The hologram covers were a big deal back then whenever one of those would come out. Uh, I'm not big like comic book print run guy. I'm not in the weeds that much on the market, but I can tell you right now there's a billion of these things. Uh, there's not, I mean, there's a decent amount graded on the CGC census, but there's a lot of these things. Uh, the key thing here is this is the first appearance of Spider-Man 2099. This is one of the books that has been going absolutely crazy the last couple days. And like I said, the reason it doesn't make any sense, I, I mean, like I said, I understand why it's doing it, but you would just think people would learn their lesson by now. One, this is a character we knew that was coming just because we got the trailer. This stuff is popping off. Uh, pop over here to GPA really quickly. Uh, you can see, I got this zoomed out a little bit, but back when the peak of the market in March, April-ish, uh, this was going for 500 and some dollars. It had since cooled way off, justifiably so. Uh, it had gotten all the way back down to around two to 300 Still a lot higher than what it was pre-peak. You know, pre-peak, this was about a 200 and some dollar book. Um, but it gotten all the way back down to sub 300 bucks again. And we see down here these December sales, four to $500 now for ASM 365. If I just scroll back just a little bit, let's just get out of December. Um, just a couple weeks ago, 300 bucks, 300 bucks, 225 bucks, 266 bucks. 228 bucks, 250, uh, and here we are literally two weeks later, 435, 440, 462, 540, 425. And census on this book is 1300 and a CGC 9.8. There's a lot more of these out there than that. I guarantee this book will be flooding CGC for grading purposes. I like the book. I would actually like to have one in my collection, not necessarily because of Spider-Man 2099, I just remember this cover as a kid being a massive deal when this came out. Um, this was my peak comic book collecting years. The early 90s is when I was really into it. I was not a big Spider-Man guy back then. I was always Team X-Men, uh, always wanted X-Men stuff, didn't buy a ton of Spider-Man. But that being said, I still remember when this came out. This and ASM 361, first appearance of Carnage. I remember when that came out, the cover for that, seeing it on the newsstand, everyone going nuts for it. Um, and that is a book that is also printed into the ground. I think there's three to 4,000 copies of that on the CGC census. This one, there's probably just as many of out there. 
Now, I'm not a big anyone that's watched the channel for a while knows um, on the comic book side of things. I take their pop counts a little looser than they do. Like a lot of comic book people will freak out about, uh, you know, a 3000 pop or census count comic book saying that that's a lot. I personally don't think that's a lot if it's a character that's in demand. The problem here is I don't think that many people are actually going to end up caring about Spider-Man 2099. And this is probably going to have a come back to reality moment at some point in time. If you really wanted this book, you should have bought it in the dip in the fall or, you know, prior to all this shenanigans. It does not make sense to run out and buy this right now. This is where FOMO kicks in. This book and the next one we're going to talk about are all over Instagram. It was all over claim sales this week on IG. It's all over a bunch of other YouTube videos. And, you know, a lot of other content creators are very responsible about it, saying the same things I'm saying right now. Doesn't matter. It's in the zeitgeist. It's being posted about people commenting on it. And then the FOMO kicks in. Uh, you know, not necessarily for these, but I've had the FOMO bug bite me before on plenty of stuff. I have it right now a little bit with ASM 50. Um, you know, I really would like to own a copy of that book at some point in time. It was always kind of like on my want list. And I'll be honest, the recent spec, the recent hype, seeing it a bunch has kicked it in gear for me wanting that book. For those that don't know, it's the first appearance of Kingpin and an absolutely classic cover. It's the worst time humanly possible to probably buy that thing. Maybe I'm wrong. It could spike up. He hasn't even appeared yet. Spoilers. Um, anywhere. It's just all rumors. But if he shows up, it's probably going to go to a next level. And then it's just a matter of how long do you wait for the pullback to dive back in again? You know, I don't know. Uh, the other one that's getting a ton of buzz is actual Spider-Man 2099 number one. Uh, another book that I very have vivid memories of is coming out hitting the newsstand red foil cover there is a white version of this as well uh, and i believe there's an error version of this as well i didn't pull data for any of that stuff there's nothing special about this other than it is spider-man 2099 number one uh we've been seeing this a lot lately where these uh more niche characters that get their own solo titles the number one book even though it's not the first appearance gets buzzy and gets run and gets spec on it um We've seen this over and over and over again throughout uh, the recent market boom in the pandemic. People get priced out of the first appearance. They then go to stuff like this. We saw it with Wolverine Limited Series number one and Wolverine Main Series number one got really high. Uh, Gambit number one has had a weird run. Uh, Shadow Cat and Wolverine had like a, a, a little mini series back in the 70s and 80s. That got a little run because. X-Men 129 got super pricey. Uh, people are just specking on these first, you know, issues of a character's run left and right. But this is another one. It makes no sense to go chase this thing. Census on this is 2100. Uh, I have a feeling there's probably way more of them out there than this. Uh, I saw stacks and stacks of them in claim sales this week, uh, like I said, on IG. Uh, here's the GPA for this. This book had never really taken off before. You know, peak pricing, peak pandemic pricing. It got up to 175, 160, and then it dipped back down uh, in the fall and winter, pretty much like everything else, got back down to around 125 bucks. But as we can see now, it is getting the silly town, 250, 220, 315, 240, uh, and then the mid to low 200s, uh, pretty much since the trailer come out. But like I said, you go back just a little bit, you look, look at how many of these have sold. This is just December. Look at this. Scrolling December, 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 December. Here's November, and we're already through November. That's it. Those are all the ones that sold in November compared to all the ones that sold in December. Gotta love it. Like I said, we go back to November here. Look at the prices 150, 129, 135, 140, 115, 140. Uh, and fast forward just a week, uh, and we're $100 more than that. So the spec market on the comic book side is alive and well. Uh, there is no way in hell I would be running out to buy Spider-Man 2099 number one. It just makes zero sense. It's not a first appearance. There's going to be a lot of these on the census. There already is. There will be a lot more. And this is just not a book or a character that I personally don't think is going to carry a lot of demand. Um, but we'll see what happens. You know, I've definitely been wrong on things in the past. Uh, also getting a lot of buzz. Now, we're going to get into a little bit more heavy hitters here. Edge of the Spider-Verse number two. 
first appearance of Spider Gwen, very integral character in the first Spider Verse movie, uh, and looks to be a very key character in Across the Spider Verse, and probably a slight chance to show up in an actual MCU slash Fox movie property at some point in time. Uh, this book also pretty heavy on the census, 2700, but the difference here is lots of demand for this book. Uh, Spider Gwen is a very popular character. Full disclosure, I own one of these in a 9.8. I think I bought mine for about 1100 bucks. Uh, back in January or February before things got too, too crazy. This spiked all the way up to 1800 in April, May. I think I bought mine right around here-ish, late January, early February. January, the end of January, the average was about one grand. I think I paid right about that for mine. I have to double check my uh, GPA account to see what I, exactly I paid for it. But it was right around a thousand bucks, give or take, you know, maybe 75 bucks either way. Uh, but this got all the way up to 17, 1800. Did dip back down to right around that thousand dollar mark. There were some sales actually under that, and you could see it's starting to come back up again. Uh, recent sales: 1200, 1500, 14, 13, uh, a 1059. Uh, but you go back once again, just a little bit into November, uh, and you could see multiple sales under a thousand dollars, with some a little bit above a thousand dollars. This is one. Uh, it has not gone crazy like. Spider-Man 2099, partially because of the price point, I believe, you know, the, the 2099 spec stuff is still pretty cheap in the grand scheme of things. This one's a bit pricey to begin with, and the market is not as hot as it was nine months ago, 10 months ago, when everyone was chasing everything. That being said, this is one I have always liked. Uh, I do think... Spider-Gwen has a good shot to make an actual MCU appearance. Uh, I do think she's going to be a major player in this next movie. It looks like the movie is going to be potentially centered around her to some degree. Um, and I, just a very popular character. I would very much, I already own one. Uh, I would not hesitate to recommend to someone to put this into their collection if they enjoy the character, enjoy the movies, whatever. Uh, this is one of those books that I do think has a pretty safe and decent floor. Um, I don't see this one, you know, crashing back down to nothingness or anything like that. Very, very popular character. Uh, and then the creme de la creme, Ultimate Fallout number four, first appearance of Miles Morales. We've talked about this book a decent amount on the channel. It has cooled off a little bit uh, over the fall and winter months, just like most of the books in the market that got really, really high. Census on this, uh, 2,800, so... Pretty high pop, but this is one of the ones, like I say, a lot of people cite this as being a high census count book. Demand is extremely high for this book. First full appearance, Miles Morales, or for, yeah, first full appearance, Miles Morales, like he showed up on like some preview issues on some other stuff. This book back in the peak was one of the key drivers. It never really dropped that much. Uh, it got up over three grand. There were some high sales over $3,000. During the summer, into the fall, into the winter, it got back down to like the mid twos, upper twos, upper mid twos, like 25, 26, 2700. And now it's starting to go back up again, back up to 3K to slightly over 3K. Uh, you know, you go back once again in November a little bit here, we see 25 to $2,800 sales with some random high ones mixed in. Uh, and then now we're consistently seeing just about or right under 3K. This is one of those books that, once again, has an extremely high floor. Uh, a lot of people are going to want this. This is viewed as many as the new Spider-Man or the next Spider-Man. Uh, he you know, Maybe he takes over for Tom Holland uh, whenever he finishes up. But there is, without a shadow of a doubt, Miles Morales will be in a, whether it's an MCU slash uh, Sony movie, whatever, at some point in time, we are going to get a live action Miles Morales. There's way too much money on the table for that not to happen. There's already big rumors of him potentially being cast or them looking for casting. Whenever that news officially hits, this one is probably going to go up. Now, it's already pricey to get into. This is one of the few modern books, along with Edge of the Spider-Verse number two and a handful of others, that I actually don't mind going after. I typically try to stay away from from the super modern stuff. Uh, but this is definitely one that is the exception to that rule just because of the massive appeal of this character. 
Um, if you were a more modern collector, this is something that you should probably consider having in your collection. Um, even in a 9.6, this wouldn't be too terrible. This is one of the few modern keys that I would be okay with in a 9.6. Um, Edge of the Spider-Verse, number two, the first appearance of Spider-Gwen, I would really want a 9.8 in that. Uh, but this book will hold value in a 9.6, even with it being a more modern, not, not necessarily ultra-modern, but modern uh, key book to kind of steal some phrases from the sports card world. There is, and now I don't, I do not own one of these. I do not own an Ultimate Fallout 4 first print. There is a second print. Uh, pop count is much lower at 1100, but the demand is also much lower because it's a second print. Um, I chose to go this way. This is the cover for the second print. This is the cover for the first print. So the difference is on the first print, you don't actually get to see his face. Uh, on the second print, you do. I, from a display slash presentation factor, actually like the cover on the second print better. The comic book investors slash people, essentially, that's a paint with a broad brush here, no offense anybody, really sour. The comic book market, I guess I should say, really sours on second prints in general in most cases. Um, they do tend to be a little bit more harder to find. I liked this one. The things that appealed to me for this one was when I bought in, the price point, I paid about a 900 bucks for mine. Uh, it is down now to about 600, 550 to 600. So I'm at a, a little bit underwater on mine. Um, but the reasons that I got mine are I like the cover. Uh, and I think long term, potentially, there could be some appeal here just to the cover differences. And it is a little bit more rare, but it does have, it's always going to have uh, the second print specter hanging around it. So I asked this question once a long time ago in a more serious comic book investing group. Would you rather have a CGC 9.8 of the second print or a CGC 9.6 of the first print? For investment level purposes, they all answered basically a CGC 9.6. I went with this one because I personally just liked the cover better and said with hell with the investment side of things. Um, I could be wrong on this as a long-term hold compared to the first print. Obviously, the first print's always going to outprice it. That's um, no doubt there. But just like a PSA 10 on the sports card world goes up, a PSA 9 goes up with it. Percentage-wise, I expect this book to move both directions. I do feel like at current prices, if you could get this for around 500 bucks, maybe like in an off eBay transaction or something, 550 right now, that might be tough uh, because Spider-Verse stuff is hot right now. I do feel like that's a pretty good point to get in on the second print book. Um, especially if you didn't want to put the money into the first print uh, at these prices, which I completely get. This is, like I said, in a first print, if you got the money, go for it. If you really want it, you like Miles Morales, you're a big Spider-Man fan. Uh, I do think this is an absolute blue chip modern day key. So, and, it, you know, this, uh, the Spider-Gwen first appearance, that stuff you know, I don't think it's FOMO so much driving that. You're, you're not seeing the big price spikes. It is going up, but you're not seeing the double and tripling like you're seeing on the 2099 stuff. Like I said, some of that is due to the entry level price point. That stuff was really cheap. I would not be chasing that stuff. There is no way in hell I would be chasing that stuff. I would much rather, you know, this thing's going for four, almost 500 bucks now. I would much rather have, me personally, the second print of Ultimate Fallout 4 and a 98 for a little bit more money. Um, or maybe even a 9.6 of the first print. So uh, that's all I have for you guys and girls today. Beware the FOMO monster. It lurks under all of our beds. It will get you. It will get the best of us and take our money. Like, comment, subscribe, all the YouTube stuff down below. Catch you guys and girls on the next one. Peace.